Podcast City Network. Hey guys, and welcome to another exciting episode of Final Score, episode 117, and uh, we just keep trotting on along, man, in the 100s now, man, it's pretty crazy being in the triple digits, but we're making it happen, but I have the man, the myth, the legend himself, Ivan, how you doing tonight, bud? I'm doing good, Chris, it's good to be here again, man, how you doing? i ah, doing pretty good, man, been uh, keeping track of a lot of these sports, been a lot of crazy stuff going on, which we're going to touch a on here in a on. second. Oh yeah, for sure. But you got to make sure to follow us on social media at PCN Final Score on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. Hit the like, follow, and subscribe buttons. That way you get notified every time we drop any kind of new news, memes, or our live episodes and can't miss out. You got to get those notifications. And as well as hitting the like and share button on this post helps Final Score get out there even more. So if you can do that for us, we'd greatly greatly appreciate it because hey everybody should see final score but it is now time for our afc preview we brought the nfc last week this week it's the afc and uh, i think it's gonna be pretty pretty damn epic honestly and we're gonna start out with the afc north with the Bengals, steelers ravens and browns and this is gonna be an interesting division i think uh for a number of reasons especially when you look at uh the Bengals. you got joe burrow coming off of his uh acl tear injury as well as the debut of jamar chase uh what do you think about that um i'm excited for joe, Bur- joe burrow to come back i actually saw that game uh, where he, you know, he got hurt. Unfortunately, it was uh, he was having a hell of a start to the season. So I'm pretty excited to see Joe Burrow come back. I mean, hey, the game's better with Joe Burrow back. There's no doubt mm-hmm. uh, about that for sure, man. But uh, I'm not trying to be negative, but I, I think Jamar Chase was kind of a kind of a reach for Cincinnati. I think it was something to appease their first rounder from last year, which was Joe Burrow. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I, I honestly think that that was just kind of like to compliment them at the wide receiver position since AJ Green was not going to be there anymore, which makes, I mean, I understand that, but, uh, like, I, I, I'm not trying to be negative on Jamar Chase. I think he'll have an 800 yard season. That's, I think that's putting a lot of, that's putting high ceiling on him personally, 800 yards for a rookie, maybe, maybe eight touchdowns. I mean, he's, he's, what, what would you say is a starter there? I mean, we definitely see how it works out. I don't know. I, I have a lot more faith in Jamar Chase uh, just because of the history he has with Joe Burrow. Uh, I think but that he, could work out very nicely. For a year, Chris. I know. I know. And I do worry about some of the rust that's going to be on Joe Burrow, especially like it, it could. So, it, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was going to say, well, sorry. I was just going to say that. I just think that he didn't play it with any premier competition in a year. I don't care how much you practice. That's that's not game time. So, mm-hmm. like I said, I'm not highly critical on Jamar Chase. I just think that it's going to take more than uh, an OTAs and a preseason to get you where you need to get in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, these are grown ass men getting paid to do this. So, I personally just think that uh, um, they should have signed a veteran receiver in the off season. Man, like I like Jamar Chase, but that was kind of a reach from the top five. Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, like and and with fifth, and with AJ Green going uh, to the Cardinals, definitely was a huge blow. If they could have had that one-two punch, I'd probably feel a lot better about this offense. But I mean, who knows what could happen? And that's why the games are played. So we'll definitely see what happens yeah. uh, with the Bengals. But with the Steelers, it gets a little bit interesting. You got Najee Harris coming in to take over as running back. Uh, of course, this is also could be Big Ben's last year. So a lot of things going on with them. Of course, you also have Chase Claypool going into his second year as a premier wide receiver. So uh, what do you think about the Steelers at this point? Uh, I think they're going to be a a, a top five caliber team in the power rankings this year. I mean, if you look at Big Ben, I got to say, homeboy shed some pounds. That guy's looking like he's going to have a hell of a year. I mean, he looks more mobile, looks more comfortable. He doesn't look conflicted or injury prone. Like, he looks good. I mean, I don't know if you've seen him, Chris, but – uh, I like the slim down Big Ben. I also like Najee Harris. That's a hell of a pick. I, a buddy of mine, 
Uh, we, we talked about it this year as a huge Steelers fan. I said, first round, you got to pick Najee Harris, and guess what they did? So I support that pick 1,000%. I think he's going to have – I think he's going to be – I think that's your rookie of the year right there. Oh, yeah, definitely could be. And uh, you know how the Steelers love to run the ball, too. So I think it's will end yep. up setting up very nicely for him in a lot of ways. But talking I about – teams are trying to set themselves up the Baltimore Ravens are looking to try and rebound with Lamar Jackson and company and obviously a little bit disappointing end of the season but now you also don't have Mark Ingram anymore uh where do you think the Ravens go from here um I think they need to have a solid uh I just think their offensive line needs to be solid I think uh not having Mark Ingram there as a number two, but I, I but you have to understand the rationale of letting him go. That's a, that's a, you're paying number one money for a backup who's probably going to get sixty touches in a year or something like that, if that. Mm-hmm. So you got to understand, like that's just it wasn't worth it for the Ravens to keep him. But personally, I think Lamar Jackson is 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 figured out. I think last year kind of showed that down the stretch, but I think he struggled the whole time. I. uh I personally don't think that uh, Lamar Jackson is going to do great things this year. I think he's going to suffer from what every running quarterback suffers. Yes, he can make mm-hmm. any quarterback that has wheels. They're going to make plays if you if if you try to do something like you know run zone or something like that. You're they're, you're, they're, they're going to be able to make plays. Okay, I get that. But at the same time, when you start to figure out the tendency of a quarterback like Lamar Jackson, like a Robert Griffin. Uh, you know, like uh, any quarterback of that stature, like a Carson Wentz, you know what I'm saying? Like he, he was a runner as well. So when a- anytime you figure out someone's game like that and you, and, and you make them have to use their arm, look, there's no doubt that Lamar Jackson has a fantastic hell of an arm, but I don't think that you can rely on his arm to win games. I mean, I think that's a fair criticism. Absolutely. I have to agree. And when you think about losing Mark Ingram, now you have J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards in the backfield. That doesn't leave you with a whole lot to work with. J.K. Dobbins only yep. entering his second year. So uh, I but don't. He's not solid even. Yeah. And he's not super solid. Uh, I, I agree. No. You know, another, another failed Ohio State player. Um, but it, <laughs> all jokes aside, it I don't think this offense is going to be able to produce like it did. Uh, during uh, Lamar Jackson's MVP year. I think this offense is going to look a lot like kind of how it did last year, except for probably a worse running game. Uh, so I don't know. I really I have a lot of questions when it comes to this offense. Defense should be pretty decently solid, but the offense I, I do have a lot of questions about. And, I don't, and like you said, with a running quarterback, they all eventually end up suffering. And it's all from the same thing of being able, once you figure that player out and you're able to contain him, then you make him have to use his arm. And his arm is sadly not as good as his legs, in my opinion. So, I mean, I, if you were the type of player, Chris, that was a Kyler Murray that runs for non-contact, then I'd say, okay, like, you know, the kid's going to be okay. But Murray has proved that the kid can throw the fucking ball. Excuse my language. But, look, he was my starting quarterback in fantasy last year, and I, I won because of just the way Kyler played. So... And the way that they play is not meant for him to run, but they just play so much zone or, or man, and then they drop back more. So it, mm-hmm. it allows Kyler to just pick up eight to 10 yards like nothing. So I don't know, man. I I like Lamar. I'm not trying to sit here and give a – I'm just giving you a fair criticism, man. Like oh, I, yeah. I just see it happening. You know, the first year everybody was like, oh, shit, okay. The second last year everybody was kind of like, tempered expectations i mean he didn't have mvp caliber stats last year did he no 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 he didn't and that's something that is i think just that maturation of being that running quarterback where people start figuring you out uh so we'll see what happens with them but our last team in the afc north the good old cleveland browns and the biggest question for the cleveland browns is can baker mayfield and this team build off what they did last year and i think that's going to be all the biggest question mark and the biggest question they're going to deal with all year long is can they do it again can the browns make the playoffs and win a playoff game what do you think about the browns this year Mm, i i I look i like baker mayfield i i like i like i like the entire team i like uh you know nick chubb and hell they even have uh this guy from from you know uh, kareem hunt you know i I really like this team. You know, I, I, I do think they're solid. I do think um, 
they they have a good solid offensive line. I think their defense is pretty solid too. Their secondary mm-hmm. is pretty good as well. Though you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do like OBJ coming back off that. I think it was a torn torn ACL, something like that. But um, I I I look, I'm I'm an idiot for for drinking the Kool Aid for the Cleveland Browns. But look, you got to win sometime, right? You have to win sometime. So. I think Baker turns the, the corner this year as far as being more comfortable with how he plays the game, especially in that system. I think they figured it out there. What's his name? Kevin Stefanovich or whatever the coach is. I can't think of it for the, for the life of me. But um, they th- I think they figured something out there with, with that nucleus of players and coaching staff, and I think they're going to do just fine. And I think they're going to be in the playoffs. I think they might get one win, Chris. I'll give them one. One playoff win. And then they will eventually lose in the divisional final round. So, and that'd be Kevin Stefanski is the name you were looking Stefanski. for. Stefanski. There you go. See, close. I was close. You were close. Close. You're definitely close. <laughs> but I have to agree. I feel like the Browns definitely have all the potential in the world, given uh, the defense they've been able to put together, the offense they've been able to put together, having a competent quarterback for the first time in yeah. ages. Uh, and I think all of that can culminate in them definitely making the playoffs again, possibly even winning this division. And I, but I have to agree. I still don't see them being a team that's going to be able to get past the divisional round. I think that there's a lot of teams, especially in the AFC now, uh, where that gap has closed, and the Browns are going to have a lot more pressure this year. So uh, this team could end up anywhere from all the way to the divisional round to all the way out of playoffs. So so many ways yeah. it could go for them. Uh, but I also do like OBJ coming back. I think that's going to be a huge boon for this team. Um, and yeah. this offense is going to be scary. It's going to be really scary. So we'll definitely see what they have to bring. But moving on to our next division, the AFC South, where we have the Colts, Texans, Jaguars, and Titans, all with question marks in a bunch of areas, uh, especially with the Colts who are now de- who have Carson Wentz but is dealing with a foot injury that he just had surgery on. Um, do you think Carson Wentz is going to be able to get back out there and maybe find some success with this team that made the playoffs last year? I mean, if you had Phillip Rivers back there, at least he's good to get you through the regular season, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I don't think Carson Wentz is long for the league. I'm sorry to say that. I think he's injury prone after that. It, that's pretty much a wrap, dude. He's dealing with a foot injury that they're they're really just ultimately worried about anything that that correlates to his his last injury, which is which is you know kind of correlates to his lay lower leg. But I really do feel bad for Carson Wentz and. You know, I, I like the kid. He's a good quarterback. I think he when he when he's when he pre-injury Carson Wentz was like a mm-hmm. dynamo, dude. Like, kid could run. Uh, he he can read. He he played competently. I don't think he's played competently since he's been back. I mean, it also shows with the way he was kind of bitching about playing time and mm-hmm. all that jazz out there. And uh, where the hell was he in uh, well, Philadelphia? So. I, I just think that Carson Wentz is just not going to – not only do I think he's not going to survive half the season, but I don't think he's going to be competent in that in that system. I just don't. like. I like Frank Reich, and I do think that that offense is fantastic. I do think the Colts are fantastic, but I think I – think, who's the backup for, for, for Indianapolis? That's a great question. I don't remember who, who, who they got there. Well, let's look it up um, real quick. You have Carson Wentz, Jacob Eason, Sam Ellinger, and Brett Hundley. So mm. de- definitely not a lot of options. I would say they would give the ball to uh, Hundley first just because of just, you know, so many years behind Aaron Rodgers. But you do have some some good young arms there, but. Ultimately, I just don't think the Colts are going to – I don't know how this experiment's going to work, man, but yeah. I can tell you it's not going to go well for Indianapolis. Yeah, I have to agree. They're saying that they should have Carson Wentz, hopefully on track for week one, but it's not a guarantee. Um, but <laughs> like you said, I, as a Philadelphia fan, I, I've seen Carson Wentz his entire career, and I have to agree that he's injury prone. Pre injury, he he was an MVP caliber quarterback, able yep. to make all the reads, all the throws, run when necessary, and looked great doing it. And from his ACL tear on, it has been n- nothing the same. So I think this experiment will fail. I think the Colts will miss the playoffs, and Carson Wentz is going to end up uh, having to find a new job. And he might end I up agree. just becoming a backup. 
and that might yeah. just be what his career looks like from here on if he stays in the league. So I mean, Jacob Eason's he's a he's a able bodied quarterback. I wouldn't sleep on that man. Yeah, I wouldn't sleep on him Definitely either. No, so well, absolutely not. But looking at some of our other South teams, the Houston Texans definitely have some questions, especially at quarterback oh, uh, with everything impending with Deshaun Watson right now. Uh, Deshaun Watson has been at training camp, though, so there is at least that. But does he actually play? That's the big question here. Do you think Deshaun Watson's no, going to play this season? He, do, he does not play this season. Not at all. Why? Why are you going to bring more hell to your to your team? Is it like you, I'm pretty sure if we were to go out there and and look at the the streets or out front of the front office gates, there's a picketed uh, what do they call those like like those little rallies going on outside. Mm-hmm. I'm almost 100 percent sure of that. Uh, no one wants to see that man play, especially with all the allegations and everything. I can tell you right now, man, you got to just sit. You, I wouldn't even let him be on the field like the the hell that that man has right now i mean it's just it's just not good i I don't know why he wasn't even released but you know they should have traded him when they could have gotten something for him yeah and right now the houston texans have tyrod taylor sitting behind him so uh definitely at least have something competent that you'd be able to put in yeah if watson doesn't play yeah so at least there's that but it's so tough with the situation because the litigation is not going to be dealt with until the beginning of next year. So now it's, do we play him? Do we not play him? Do we try to trade him? Um, which there's been a lot of teams apparently linked to a possibility of him being traded to, including the Minnesota Vikings and the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, so a lot could happen in this situation. Personally, I think the Texans are going to end up being stuck with him. And I think they may try to play him. But I think they're going to end up with a lot of backlash. And I, I, at that point, who knows what will happen. Um, but something else to look at in this situation is the running back situation. They bring in Mark Ingram to be the new premier back. But is he really that new premier back? Mm, no. I mean, like like we were saying earlier, there's a reason why they got rid of him. I mean, in this in this. What he has going for him is that he he has won a Super Bowl. He has had a proven career. He is a winner. Okay, um, I, I do understand that. But as a premier back, those days are behind him. He, you know, he hasn't been a premier back in quite some time. I mean, yeah, he had that one um, insane season two years ago. I think uh, this guy's rookie uh, season. Uh, what's the quarterback's name? Uh, Lamar Jackson, mm-hmm. you know, his rookie season, you know, Ingram kind of broke out, but what the hell did he do last year? I mean, he was forgotten. And Dobbins isn't a better running back. I don't know what the hell happened personally. I would love to know what what caused the decline of Mark Ingram in Baltimore. Aren't you curious? How are you a top five or ten back and then the next year you're you're no one? Doesn't that doesn't that make you a little curious? Well, I mean, I know he was dealing with a couple of injury issues, but looking overall, he just didn't do anything last year. Um, only had point. seventy. What, you know? Yeah, he had only seventy-two carries for two hundred and ninety-nine yards, uh, two touchdowns. So it wasn't much of anything last year. And you know, injuries are injuries, but I think it's also age. You know, yeah, I think this guy's been in the league uh, ten years now. So with That's crazy that, to think. Oh, I know it is crazy to think, but. I don't think he has a lot of tread left on the tires, to be perfectly honest. Most running backs uh, that are considered good usually only last about 10 years on average. So he's about at that point, and I think he's about done. So uh, I think this is going to be his last two raw in Houston, and then that's going to be it, personally. Yeah, yeah, I agree. A shelf life on running backs in this era isn't long. I mean, what, five to six years, if that? Cause yeah, per average. so yeah. much... Yeah, so much depth at the position, Chris. I don't, I don't see Ingram even. Who is their backup right now? You got Ingram playing, and then you have Darius Jackson or David Johnson still there. Mm-hmm. But David Johnson's a shell of the of a player of what he used to be in in the Arizona man. So I don't really know. I mean, dude, this guy used to be a MVP caliber player. He's what six tied twenty third in the league in yards last year. It wasn't even injury laden. In six ninety one on the ground. It's terrible, man. That and they terrible. had uh, they have Philip Lindsay as well. So and Philip Lindsay wasn't exactly lighting it up in Denver. So 
Definitely, no. I don't think they have a whole lot to really work with, as well as Rex Burkhead, but it's Rex Burkhead, so. Yeah, we're not in New England. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This isn't New England anymore. So definitely going to be interesting what they do at the running back position, but they do still have a competent defense, and they do still have a couple receivers with uh, Kiki Kuti and, of course, Will Fuller. But beyond that, they don't have much. Oh, they got Jonathan Grenard from mm -hmm. Florida. Cool. But looking at our next AFC South team, the Jacksonville Jaguars are breaking in their new quarterback, Trevor Lawrence, in a quarterback competition between him and Minshew Mania himself, Gardner Minshew. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, though, came out kind of a mixed bag in his preseason debut, made a few good throws, but made a few mistakes as well. Uh, what do you think about Jacksonville going forward with Trevor Lawrence? He didn't sign him to play on the bench, right? It's true. First overall pick. Yeah. That's what I think. I think that uh, I think you might see Minshew. Uh, it's weird, man. I just don't think that Minshew's that type of quarterback. I think Trevor Lawrence will start, but not by much. He's got a short leaf, uh, leash. If he starts messing up, uh, I think I don't think Urban Meyer is going to be hesitant to pull him. You know what I mean? So, um, I like Trevor Lawrence, but let's not let's temper expectations. I don't think. I don't think Urban Meyer's an NFL coach either, so don't be surprised if um just don't be surprised if Notre Dame gets their guy. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> and I oh. only say that because I don't think that's my expectations of the Jags this year. That's all I'm gonna say is that. That's all you need to hear from me, because and look, I could be eating my words. I know I I understand. I look, I'm a huge Florida fan, as you guys can see. You know what I mean? But I'm just gonna let you know, Urban Meyer, it's a different game. College football and NFL is a completely different ball game. Like I I I don't I don't really think he understands that yet. Yeah, and that's the big thing is I don't think Urban Meyer is going to have a lot of success on the pro level just no. because he's a college quarterback. You're able to do the gadgety fun stuff and all the kind of ways that he liked to play the game in college. I don't think you can pull that off in the pros. So no. hopefully he understands that, but we'll only know once we get to the actual season. But looking at our last team in the AFC South, the Tennessee Titans, uh, who ended up being able to have a great year last year, uh, now add in Julio Jones as their top wideout and have Derrick Henry coming back after a 2,000-yard season. Do you think they're going to be able to duplicate what they did last year? Um. Oh, yeah. I think and then some. I mean, you add Julio Jones, you know, top tier, you know, top, arguably the top receiver in the league in that offense. It gives you that ability to go play action and actually have to worry about their offense. A.J. Brown isn't anything to sniff at either. Um, I also think we we need to be honest and tell ourselves when is Derrick Henry not gonna rush for two thousand yards? <laughs> but I don't think that's this year. I think he's gonna have. I think he's everybody. I think he's the number one consensus overall pick in fantasy this year. Do oh you yeah, disagree with that? No, I know I'm gunning for him. Same. I I honestly feel pretty highly on Derrick Henry. So I honestly hate the living hell out of Ryan Tannehill. So. <laughs> you will not hear anything about Ryan Tannehill from me, but I will say this. If this idiot at quarterback can just play the position like a, a good, decent quarterback, I mean, the sky's the limit, man. I mean, I think, I think, I think the Titans can win the Super Bowl. I yeah. can, I, I really do. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, I think they have an offensive line worthy enough. And, uh, yeah, and the defense is also something like like that we need to take take you know uh, respect and and admiration for. I mean, dude, they have, they have Christian Fulton, Janoris Jenkins in that back in that defensive secondary. Not only that, but they have Bud Dupree as well, who they just signed from Pittsburgh. So let's not be so dismissive of how good this defense is. I think, and you also have Mike Vrabel coaching this team, who is a linebacker. So. I think they're going to do good things this year, man. Yeah, I have to agree. I think they're going to do really good things this year. And uh, this team definitely is a team I think that could win the Super Bowl. Uh, this team, if you look at everything they did, they were just such a ground pound team with Derrick Henry with a uh, mediocre passing game. But now you add in Julio Jones and you kick this whole thing into gear with having a deep, a true deep threat now. 
So if Ryan Tannehill can get it together, man, that's got, like you said, the sky's the limit for this team. So we'll definitely be able to see a lot once we hit the regular season. And uh, yeah, I know I'm trying to get Derrick Henry in fantasy. And uh, if you're out there, I'm giving you fantasy advice right now. Go for Derrick Henry. <laughs> if you have a yes, shot. if you get him at number one, don't do what I did last year and get Christian McCaffrey. Don't yeah, do yeah, pass on him. Um, but with the shirt thing, right? But looking at the uh, our next division, the AFC East with the Patriots, Dolphins, Jets, and Bills, a lot going on here uh, with some quarterback debuts and quarterback battles. Teams trying to get paid, or sorry, players trying to get paid. Uh, all kinds of stuff happening. But we'll start with the Patriots. You currently have a quarterback battle between Cam Newton and Mac Jones. And Mac Jones didn't look too bad in his preseason debut. Uh, But what do you think about the Patriots so far? Um, I mean, I think that they're dumb for keeping Cam. Uh, He's just not meant for that team. If you watched last year, he was awkward many times last year. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Cam Newton magic worked for like the first week. And then that was it. I don't remember them doing anything after that. And Mac Jones is going to come in relatively early. I do think that he is going to have a, I think if you watch Mac Jones, he does a good job of check downs, but mm-hmm. it'll leave. It, I think it'll leave the middle of the field open with, with, with uh, Nikki, with Nikhil Harry, you know, mm-hmm. getting some good opportunities this year is like he should have last year, but you have Cam Newton. So, <laughs> um, I like Mac Jones. Do I think he's going to get start the start right away? No, I think Cam Newton will because of him being a veteran, whatever that means, because he's terrible. <laughs> um, but I just don't think Cam Newton is the player that he once was. The minute the minute Carolina fall out fell out of favor for him, man, that guy that guy is not the same player anymore. Yeah, I have to agree. And I was talking with people about this earlier today that Cam Newton is just a shell of himself at this point. Yep. You know, through the injuries and everything that happened in Carolina, he's just he's done. And I think he was trying to find a resurrection with the Patriots, thinking if he got into the Bill Belichick system that maybe he'd somehow be able to salvage his career. But sadly, I think it's all over for him. And this is probably going to yep. be his last year, I think, in the league. Or he might get another shot somewhere else, but Again, I think it'll be the same situation. Him going like four of 14 for like 60 yards. And it's just not going to be pretty. So Cam Newton, I think, is done. Mac Jones era, I think, is going to be taking over. Mac Jones seems to fit into that offense a lot better uh, with his skill set that he'll be able to make this Kind of reminds me of Matt Castle, though. A little bit, yeah, especially in that system. So right? Just the way he moves and... His uh, his kind of his like demeanor just really reminds me of a Matt Castle. Same height, same build, same kind of release, same gameplay. Like, mm-hmm. um, I see that guy being successful in that offense. I, I really do. Yeah, I do too, and I think it's going to be really great stuff to watch. So we'll definitely see what we get with the Patriots this year. But looking at our next AFC East team, the Miami Dolphins, they enter year two of the Tua Taco Viola era, uh, which. Could be good, could be bad. There's no Ryan Fitzpatrick breathing down his neck anymore. What do you think happens with the Dolphins this year? I do like their chances to have a positive year. I don't think it's going to be anything like, oh, God. But I I did like the way Tua looked in the preseason thus far. I do like Miles Gaskin, but I do think Malcolm Brown's going to get uh, the bulk of the carries there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jalen Waddle was a reach-ass pick. I, I hated that pick. What the hell makes you think that guy goes – like? I understand Alabama players are proven, but dude, he's a fucking wide receiver. What are you doing picking him that high? I would have won mm-hmm. with Devontae Smith. I don't understand why Jalen Waddle went before. I don't understand how Jamar Chase went before Devontae Smith. I think that the, I think that if he adds weight to his frame, he's going to be another Marvin Harrison. Why the hell do people not understand that? Mm-hmm. Why do they understand that? That's why I like the fact that the Eagles pretty much had to steal the draft getting Devontae Smith where they got him. Right. So. And I know and I know we're not talking about your favorite team right now. <laughs> but I'm being honest with you, Chris. Like it just proves my point that Jalen Waddle look, I'm I'm so sorry for this, but Jalen Waddle is going to be a bust. Mark my words. He will be a bust. He won't even surpass five hundred yards receiving this year. Book it. Book it. Book it, book it. He won't even get 500 yards. Not even as a slot guy, dude. Mm. I promise you. 
Man, I'll put that's, money that's on a, that. That's a bold statement. I'm, uh, but I promise you, well, it's true. He is not. He's no way. He's not even fully. He's not even fully uh, cleared from his injury, is he? Because no, I don't no, remember yeah, ever he's seeing him learn. Yeah, he he's okay, he played because, in the preseason game uh, a little bit. Didn't look great. I saw him, but he didn't look spectacular. He didn't look fast. He didn't look like the Jalen model that I know. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, man. I'm not trying to be negative. I just am not crazy. I'm not crazy about Jalen Waddle, man. I, I don't think we saw enough of Jalen Waddle in college. I anybody can play. Anybody can go in that freaking system and do that. I'm sorry, man. It, it, and, I, and I'm not saying that like you and I can do that. I'm saying if you're a college football player that is the elite of your class in college and you're playing for Alabama and you're an elite running back because there's like all of them in that damn stable of running backs, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. We all know that. But it it doesn't mean that because that's what you the stable you come from, that doesn't make you a deserving top five, ten consensus pick, dude. I'm sorry. Like, Jalen Waddle did not do enough in college to deserve that. I'm sorry. Like, everybody can argue with me and say whatever they want. I know he had the stats to prove everything, but – Jalen Waddell is going to be a bust. Mark my words. And I hope that if that happens, whoever heard my words, including yourself, can go, damn, this guy is not crazy. <laughs> but he's going to be a bust. We're, def- Ted Ginn. We're definitely going to check back on this again, I tell you that. Um, but moving on to Me our – Yeah, but moving on with this, uh, the Dolphins, I think I think they could have the potential for a good year. Uh, I think Jalen Waddle also was a reach, but I still think he'll find a little bit of success. I think it's just it might take him time to acclimate because he's not Devontae Smith. So I agree. I the, agree, man. At the end of the day, I think it's he'll absurd. be a mediocre it's wide receiver. That the Heisman winner got picked outside the top ten. That's bullshit. No, no, no. He got picked bullshit. at eight. He was picked at eight, but he's outside yeah, the top eight. five. Even eight. Even eight. Excuse me. Top five, but ridiculous. The fact that he fell to eight. Stupid. This oh, is yeah. just, just going to be smarter. I'm telling you right now, just wait and see. He is the second coming of Marvin Harrison, dude. And I mark my words, and I promise you right now, when they get the right quarterback in Philly, Chris, you're going to notice that, and you're going to say, damn, dude, this guy's right. Watch. Oh, yeah, and I hope that happens. <laughs> I pray that happens. <laughs> but moving on, we look at the New York Jets, who uh, get to bring in their new quarterback was Zach Wilson, who started out a little rocky. Yeah, he started out a little rocky in his preseason <laughs> debut, but uh, ended up coming up a little bit better near the end of uh, what he actually played. So uh, I don't know if he's going to be the answer or not, but you're playing for the Do you Jets. you see my face? Yeah, Do you it, see it looks, it looks right pain. Now? Do you know what that's for? Do you know why I'm making this face? Why are you making that face? Because when your freaking running, starting running back is Tevin Coleman, okay? <laughs> when your starting running back is Tevin Coleman, you're not even going to win 500 games. You're not going to be a fighter. Got you covered. Yes, dude. That could have gone for a, like another five minutes, and then that would have been how I feel about the Jets. But I'm telling you. And then you have Cor- – look, no offense, but Corey Davis, Jamison Crowder, and Keelan Cole didn't win anybody any playoff games. I mean, yeah. dude, are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What is this defense? Well, I can't get mad. Jared Davis is a Gator, so – that's all they have. Jared Davis. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's not a whole lot to work with. But it, hey, Damn Marcus May. I'm going to sum this up in one word or in, in two words, three words. Sorry. It's the Jets. So at the end of the day, you can only have so much tempered expectations for this team. I think they're going to be garbage. Uh, might be lucky to get four wins. Uh, so we'll see. Maybe they'll get lucky and get five wins because it's a 17 game season now. Who knows? But looking at our next team, the Buffalo Bills are the class of the AFC East right now. But the question is, after getting their quarterback a pup, pup, pup paid, can they return to the AFC title game? Can they make it all the way back and maybe finally make a Super Bowl? Dude, I can't tell you how much I love Josh Allen. Like, we can sit here and I can tell you how much I love Josh Allen all day. I love Josh Allen because he came from, uh, from from a college that. 
Not me or you. That's so hilarious. I think that's you. <laughs> wow. I'm looking. I'm so sorry, but like some ad came on and I'm like trying to look at. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> um. Anyway, Jesus. Back to my point before the internet took control of my computer. Um, Dude, I can talk to you about Josh Allen all day, man. And I say that because. The guy came from a college that no one knows. Do you know what college you came from? Mm. Reedley College. Where is that? What is that? <laughs> I, I, I looked that up. Let's look that up. Reedley, like, is that real? Or am I, am I, am I getting tricked here? You might be getting tricked. Where did Josh Allen went to college where? University of Wyoming. Okay. Because what did it say here? Yeah, Reedley College. That's weird. So anyway, so Josh Allen going to Wyoming. I love that kid. Like, dude, what resilience to play for the Buffalo Bills. And the chemistry he has with Stephon Diggs. And they added Emmanuel Sanders, which is pretty damn awesome. Mm -hmm. But, dude, I can't stress to you enough how good Devin Singletary is, too. That's going to be good to get him some more carries there. But, um Man, I absolutely love Josh Allen in this offense. And as long as they got a healthy Stephon Diggs and they can get Devin Singleton going with Zach Moss to boot, they'll be fine, man. And they also got Matt Breida, so don't sleep on that offense. They've added some key components, and the defense is solid too. Micah Hyde's looking to make uh, quite an impact in his uh, second year, so pretty excited. Oh, yeah, definitely should be some good stuff. And I think the Bills are going to be able to make a deep run. Uh, the only team I think it's really going to be able to challenge the Bills is going to be the Chiefs again, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. Uh, but the Bills, I think, are going to be a class team. Josh Allen, Devin Singletary, Stephon Diggs. Like, they're just making it happen over there. And it's so great to see this franchise start to bounce back and finally actually contend for AFC titles and trying to get to the Super Bowl again when after so many years of just mediocrity and just sadness, yeah. really. Um, and even if you go all the way back to the 90s, yeah, they made four straight Super Bowls. Guess what? They lost them they all. They lost every one of them, yeah. So you can't God imagine what kind and I meant of talk like the fourth year, by the way. Not second year. Fourth yeah. year with the with the Bills. Yep, fourth year. So definitely gonna be very interesting to see what happens for the Bills this year. I think they definitely can make it back to the AFC title game, possibly even win it. And uh yeah. Josh Allen was second MVP voting last year too, so a lot could happen for this team. We'll definitely see what happens. But looking at our last division, the AFC West, we have the Oakland Ra or sorry, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Denver Broncos, the LA Chargers, and of course the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, the Raiders will start with uh, looking uh, pretty interesting. You're going to have Derek Carr still teaming up with John Gruden, Henry Ruggs the third entering his second year. But what I find interesting is the running back tandem they're going to have of Josh Jacobs and Kenyon Drake. I think that's going to be one hell of a backfield for them. It's hopefully going to take enough pressure off Derek Carr so he can find a little success. Um, but what do you think yeah, about Drake, the Raiders? Drake had a hell of a had a hell of a year last year, just shy of a thousand yards on the ground and ten touchdowns. I mean, that's a solid year, man. That's a solid number one in back numbers in this day and age. Um, oh yeah, for sure. I also love Josh Jacobs too, man. I mean, the kid is a badass running back. I mean, this is the kind of running back you want in fantasy. I mean. This is a guy that's probably going to go second, third round in fantasy drafts, but not too much outside the top ten or top in the first round. But it's just going to depend on how that how your how your league is. But yeah, I mean, as long as you have Darren Waller, uh, that's all you need. <laughs> and they have a solid offensive line with Leatherwood and Incognito there. So, and their defense is pretty good with Yannick Ngakwe. I think that's how you say his name. Yeah, you got it. And uh, also, I do like Jonathan Abram. I'm pretty sure he was from uh, yeah Mississippi State. I like him a lot, too. Um, but, yeah, man, it's going to be interesting to see how. My thing is, this team hinges on how Derek Carr does, man. I mean, if Derek Carr is just consistent, the team's consistent. You'll see him in the playoffs. But if Derek Carr has a shit year like he did uh, last year, I mean, 
I don't think he had a shit year last year. Yeah, he, had, he was 11th in yards, 4,100, but still only threw 27 touchdowns to nine picks. I mean, it's not great. So uh, just outside the top 10 in each category. So um, I don't know. I'm not – look, I love Derek Carr. I really do, but I just don't like him. I don't think he's going to last long in, in, in L.A. Uh, or L.A., Las Vegas, excuse me. LV. <laughs> um, yeah, right. Um, so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I don't know. I do like Henry Ruggs, but Brian Edwards is a number two. I'm not too, too, I mean, dude, this is a guy who only had 11 receptions and 193 yards and a touchdown last year. So, uh, I mean, he's in his second year, but I don't, I don't find Brian Edwards to be an impact player. So the league is different, but so far, a lot of the teams that I've seen, um, <clears throat> in this division don't have extremely strong wide receivers except for what Tyreek Hill that's mm -hmm. it <laughs> pretty much well you also have Keenan Allen I mean but no, outside of I, that yeah I'm but sorry. outside of that not sorry much. for the disrespect I forgot how great their quarterback was over there so yeah oh yeah for sure but one thing I look at too is the tight end position especially when you look at what uh, the Raiders actually do have um, with Jared Cook and then, of course, a couple others. But it, it's – I think this offense is getting to a position where it can make some noise. If they could just bring in, like you said, one more, I think, wide receiver uh, that could be a top-flight option, this team could be a whole different team from what we saw last year. So they definitely have the offensive line. They definitely have the running backs. And I think Derek Carr is a good quarterback. I think he's just gotten an unfair shakedown. But I think the Raiders could be bounce back greatly this year. And, and not saying they're going to challenge the Chiefs, but maybe even challenge for that seventh or that sixth seed uh, in the playoffs and maybe actually make a push. Who knows? But we'll definitely see once the season starts. But looking at our next team, the Denver Broncos, they still have to figure out what they're doing at quarterback between Teddy Bridgewater and Drew Locke. What do you think about that? Uh, we're still talking about Bridgewater? That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> That's a little wrong. No, I, I like Teddy Bridgewater, but it, it, I just think it's Drew Locke's job to lose. I, I still think it's weird looking at Melvin Gordon in Denver. Uh I mean, he, Melvin Gordon, I'm pretty sure, had a solid year last year. He had just shy of 1,000 yards and nine touchdowns, so that's good. I just, I don't know, Jerry Judy finally gets the top nod here as the number one clear-cut guy. He had a good year, but I uh, he had a fantastic year, really, for a rookie. 800 yards and, what, nine touchdowns? Pretty mm -hmm. That's pretty freaking amazing. Uh, so, I mean... They're good, man. I have no problem with them. Still return a solid defense. So, you know, I do like Jonathan Harris and Von Miller as long as, you know, they got those guys there. They're solid. Put in a Hall of Famer or uh Yeah. Potential Hall of Famer Von Miller. But yeah, it, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting to see how their season shakes out. But they're a couple of injuries away from going back to getting the number one pick in the draft. Yeah, and I think that greatly could happen. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater, I want to like him. I think he has been able to find success where he's been. It's just he's not quite there, and, and it's it's sad to kind of see because I don't think Drew Locke really is going to have much of a future. I think Drew Locke has gotten lucky for what he has been able to do, but I think Drew Locke, in my opinion, is kind of kind of going to end up being another you know poo poo ka choo kind of quarterback, and yep. is going to end up being out of the league probably in the next five to six years. So Teddy mm -hmm. Bridgewater, I think will end up getting the start for the Broncos, but I don't think the Broncos are going to do much this year. And I actually have them picked to finish last in this division. Uh, so I think the Broncos are going to just be fishing for a top 10 pick come next year. So uh, yeah, definitely not a lot of high hopes for them, but one team that does have a lot of high hopes is the LA chargers entering year two of the Justin Herbert era. Justin Herbert went out and lit it up last year and also have Austin Eckler uh, in the backfield now who is looking to make a huge statement this year. Uh, do you think this team's going to be able to make that kind of a push? Yeah, I actually do. I think uh, they're another team that, uh, dare I say, is eligible for the Super Bowl pick for me. Uh, 
Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are strong guys at the wide receiver position. I do love Austin Eckler. I think Herbert's going to have an MVP caliber season. And I also think don't don't sleep on uh, on that defense, man. I think um, you know I really think that they're going to they're going to surprise a lot of people, man. I think they're going to do a lot of big things. So uh, and you know Derwin James, as long as that poor kid can stay healthy, man, they you know I think he's going to be an elite player. Don't sleep on Derwin James. Oh, yeah, for sure. Definitely another one to keep an eye out for. So it's definitely going to be interesting to see what the Chargers do this year. I think they're going to do really good things uh, with Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert, I think, was one of those steals at quarterback for that draft, and he's going to be able to really, I think, turn some heads in year two. I don't think he's going to have too much of a sophomore slump, especially when you got Keenan Allen to throw to. So mm-hmm. definitely keep an eye out for them. But our last team of and the A's. Joey Bosa, yeah. Yeah, and you, yeah, of course, you can't forget Joey Bosa in that defense. So. Yeah, the Chargers, I think, are starting to get it going. But looking at our last team in the AFC West, the Kansas City Chiefs, our uh, Super Bowl participant last year, uh, looking to try and right the wrongs of last year, what happened in that Super Bowl against the Tampa Bay Bucks. Do you think that Mahomes and company can make it back to the Super Bowl? I do. I think the offensive line has been uh, revamped, and that defense oh, yeah. is solid still. I mean, dude, that defense is scary. Uh, but... Yeah, this team is ready to roll. I do love Clyde Edwards-Alaire. Uh, he had a phenomenal season. He's kind of a do-it-all back, huh? Oh, yeah, he really is. I mean, you got Travis Kelsey, the best tight end in the league, Hall of Famer. Uh, you got Tyreek. You know, I, lo- I actually love that uh, they got two Gator wide receivers as their second and third, their backups, Demarcus Robinson and Antonio Callaway. That's cool. You no, know, in all seriousness, I do love – um this this offense and it's going to be nice to see what uh, patrick holmes does what it is fourth year Mm -hmm. i believe so yeah it's definitely going to be i think really interesting i especially after mahomes got paid i I wonder if you know the mental because now you got to think about the mental game of this mahomes hasn't been in a position where you know he he's had to now rebound after a huge loss so i kind of want to see mentally how he prepares for the season goes into the season and see if they can keep it together to make that push again so my money is though on the fact that i think they're going to be able to do it and i think we may end up with a uh, another chiefs bills afc title game even but uh i think the chiefs are definitely going to be able to make a huge push and possibly take this division so We'll see what we end up getting, but that was yeah. our AFC preview. We thank you guys so much for uh, joining us for that. And next week we're going to be rolling out a lot of our predictions. So definitely make sure to come back and we'll be giving you our divisional winners as well as who we think is going to make it all the way to the Super Bowl. because Hey, why not? We got nothing better to do. So <laughs> definitely make sure to join us next week on episode 118 when we bring that to you. But you also need to make sure to check us out on all of our content platforms. What can you tell us about that, Ivan? I definitely can tell you that uh, audio, for our audio listeners, we have uh, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Pandora, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podbean, Google Podcasts, Player FM, Bullhorn, CastBox, Listen Notes. And you can see us on, uh, if you want to look at us on video, we're on YouTube and also Facebook. And uh, search the keyword PC and final score. And then podcastcity.net slash final score. Hit the like, follow, and subscribe button, guys. Yeah, definitely make sure to do that. learning how to speak English. (laughs) Yeah, English is always fun. But that does bring us to our next topic, which is the Big Ten, Pac-12, and the ACC have been discussing a formation of an alliance, likely around scheduling, but could possibly be even more. Uh, So much going on, it feels like now, in college football, left and right with these conferences. But what's your initial reaction to this news? I mean, I'm not surprised. They, they need to get something going. The SEC is just about to take over college football even more with mm. those additions. And you can say what you want about Oklahoma and Texas. They need to win games. But, yeah, but what they bring to the SEC is unparalleled to what any other division in college football does. Mm-hmm. Uh, college football is the Southeastern Conference. Everybody should know that by now. But <clears> no sorry about that, Chris. Yeah. Sorry, I know, I know. <laughs> but I will say the Big Ten and the Pac-12 and the ACC should do something. We need to have super conferences. It's where it's going, man. If we want to see these fantastic uh, 
college football games and playoff games. There's no other way, Chris. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And I have to agree. It's, it's crazy to think that we went from having these small little dinky conferences. Now we're going to move on to bigger conferences, which will lead inevitably to super conferences. So uh, it's, it's going to be crazy to see the landscape of college football change the way it's going to change. And I don't think anybody's ready for what's about to happen and how quickly it's going to happen. Uh, But another interesting fact of these talks between the PAC 12, big 10 and ACC is that the big 12 was not included. So something to kind of keep in mind that here, is weird. yeah, I, which tells me that a lot of people are expecting possibly the Big Twelve to dissolve completely after losing Texas and Oklahoma. So, I mean, who I knows what'll that. happen? Yeah, I could see it too because they don't really have any kind of perennial power now outside of maybe Oklahoma State, and that doesn't leave you a whole lot to work with. Definitely doesn't keep you as a Power Five uh, conference. So. Uh, definitely, I think the Big 12 will end up getting absorbed one way or the other into a lot of conferences. Um, but with this alliance, this could mean any number of things when it comes to preferential yeah. scheduling, uh, when it comes to big matchups, when it comes to just how they schedule non-conference games. It could literally affect so much on the landscape of college football. It could start forcing hands yet again. And I'm really excited to see what this could lead to, man. Yeah, I mean, like like we keep saying, the possibilities are endless. I uh, I'm excited to see how these things can uh, can yield some pretty spectacular uh, uh, ex- you know expectations and realities, man. Like what what could be and um, what you know what new rivalries can happen or what, what, what you know what teams end up where. But it all ends. It, it all has to happen. Uh, quickly because i'm telling you man like other schools and conferences are going to make deals and and then after that it's too late for for these big 12 teams oh yeah for sure another thing too to kind of look at is a quote from uh uh george klyavkov uh the commissioner of the pac-12 who said quote i've been in frequent and regular contact with all the other a5 uh commissioners the last few weeks about four or five complex issues that are facing our industry anything beyond that is just speculation and i can't comment to, uh comment on it end quote uh and he told that the espn just this past friday so very interesting to see that kind of stance where it's like hey everything's in the air but we are talking about everything uh and it's definitely a lot that could happen god i can't even stress it enough how much so much different things could happen in this whole scenario and uh i don't know man it's gonna be crazy but the next college football playoff meeting is set for september 28th in chicago um and who knows what the athletic directors may be discussing come then too when it comes to uh, all these a lot potential alliances or even mergers. Um, so we'll definitely have more on that once we have news uh, from those meetings. So definitely make sure to check back with Final Score because we're definitely going to bring it to you as quickly as we can. Um, but still, man, I can't wait. I'm really excited to see what happens to college football. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm completely uh, ready to go for college football, man. I can't wait. Absolutely. But something uh, I also can't wait for is all the great merch that you can find on the Podcast City Network shop. A lot of great stuff going on over there because at the PC- PCN shop, they have what you need, whether it's a net gator to protect you from COVID-19, a mug for your morning coffee, or a t-shirt just to look cool. They got you covered. Get the latest apparel and gear for your favorite podcast and Podcast City Network by visiting podcastcity.net backslash shop and checking out the lineup, which does bring us to our next topic, which is... A little sadder of a topic, but one I think even you would agree that we probably need to touch on, and that is the passing of the great head coach, Bobby Bowden, uh, who passed away recently at age 91. Uh, Had a really long life, obviously, but accomplished so many things when it comes to college football and being able to make uh, changes in people's lives as well as all the players' lives. So, so many great things that he was able to do, and he was honored by many former players, coaches, um, and by hundreds of others, um, and was looked to as a father figure as they were paying respects to him at the Florida Capitol. So, uh, what are your thoughts on this, man? Yeah, I, uh, I, I would be lying to you if I said I, you know, I didn't care because I, I mean, I do immensely. I mean, this guy, um, was a phenomenal football coach. I mean, he is the coach that I, that, that, you know, if you didn't, if you didn't love Florida, you know, and hated Bowden, you know, you wanted Bowden. I always wanted Bowden to be my coach at some point. He was just different. He was cool. He's a Southern guy. I love Spurrier, but 
Uh, Bobby Bowden is just a legend. He's something different. And uh, we lost a great, great human being, not just a coach, just a great human being, a uh, very good man. And uh, it's a really sad day to uh, know that Bobby Bowden has passed. So uh, it's very, it, you know, it's it's crazy to think about, really. But when I tell you he's a legendary coach, I mean, everybody should know who Bobby Bowden is without a shadow of a doubt. Oh, absolutely. And uh, Bobby Bowden, like we said, has done so much in college football for so many. So it's great to see the honor they are paying, the respects they are paying to him, because uh, even though I'm not a Florida State fan by any means whatsoever, I still respect Bobby Bowden and everything he's done for college football. So uh, definitely a sad day to see him go um, passing a pancreatic cancer. Um, Definitely a sad day. But, you know, our respects uh, and uh, condolences go out to his friends and family and we definitely hope that you know you're able to find some type of uh, uh, I can't even think of the word I'm trying to say right now I'm just so taken aback by this man yeah uh, no it's yeah it's crazy it definitely is crazy but our respects to everybody out there and uh, definitely lost a great one as we give a moment of silence for Bobby Bowden But that does bring us now to the good old Podcast City Network. What can you tell us about that, Ivan? What I can tell you about that, Chris, is that uh, if this damn thing would get right, <laughs> Jesus, anyway. All right, well, guys, Final Score is a proud member of Podcast City Network. Podcast City Network has 20 independent podcast members across all genres of podcasting. Find PCN on all major social media platforms. Facebook.com slash Pod City Network, Twitter at Podcast City uh, Net, Instagram at Podcast City Net as well, YouTube search keyword Podcast City Network, website uh, is simply PodcastCity.net. And also, guys, we are always looking for interested podcast, podcast hosts and content creators to join the network, but we understand that may not be what you're looking uh, for right now. You may just need a, new lo- a logo, an intro, outro video, music for your show, live stream hosting, voiceover work, or just some one-on-one consulting. No matter the need, we have you covered. Just go to podcastcity.net slash services and fill out the contact form and an estimate so we can uh, help you reach your podcasting goals. Be creative, be independent, be yourself, Podcast City Network. Yes, awesome right. stuff. A lot of great stuff from Podcast City Network. But that does now mm-hmm. bring us to BYU. And the Cougars have a sponsor who's offering <laughs> to cover tuition for walk-on members of their football team. But it even goes further than that just because they were able to broker this deal with uh, their sponsor, Built Brands, who offers protein bars uh, as an endorsement to be able to help uh, walk-on players have their tuition privately funded for – the entirety of of the school year. So really great move, I feel like, by BYU to make sure that even their walk-on players are taken care of who might not be under scholarship. Awesome. Absolutely. But That's even phenomenal. but even if you are a scholarship player, there you can receive a thousand dollars for each time for representing the company. So uh still offering things to all one hundred and twenty three members of the Cougar football program. Uh so definitely I think a huge move and a positive way That's I think to use game NIL. Game. Mm-hmm. So what do you think about this? Totally man? game changing. That's awesome, dude. I mean, it's something new. It's something different. Especially cool that it, it's like within the college institution. It's not like you know something outside the outskirts of the, of of uh, you know outside the hands of the college. So mm-hmm. really cool that they got that going. Um, such a good way to keep that in house, so it doesn't seem more corrupt like we were talking about. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Definitely a good way to approach it. And uh, their athletic director, Gary Verne, said, quote, we're trying to put BYU on the map for all the right reasons. We knew this would be exciting uh, to be kind of the first ones to dance in this area, end quote, uh, which they definitely are the very first ones as a school to try and set up an NIL endorsement deal for their players. And I don't think you could have done it any better way. So definitely hats off to BYU for this one. Yeah, that's fantastic. I, I can't, I can't, you know, I can't love on this anymore. It's amazing. Like that. Yeah. I can't, I can't deny the greatness in that. Yeah. And they said, that they, they, yeah, for real. And they said they took, basically took advantage of the fact that uh, Utah doesn't have any state laws for NIL yet. So BYU was yeah. able to 
uh, do what they could because now with the NCAA's NIL uh, policies, they were able to basically just make up their own their own po- their own uh, approach to this. Yeah. So uh, really great to see them do this. They said it definitely is an experiment uh, for them to do this. Uh, as Built Brands also said that this was an experiment for them as a new way of being able to broker. Uh, sponsorship deals so a lot of experimenting going on with this and what i love more than anything is that it's helping walk-ons because if you don't understand what a walk-on goes through let's fill you in walk-ons are not scholarship players which means their tuition is not covered when they go to play for these programs so to be able to have their tuition covered is such a huge deal um big deal and really this is gonna be the first time you're gonna see guys have tuition on a football team fully covered all the way through so this i think could end up becoming uh new not only new terrain obviously but also become a way for other schools to approach this with companies to be able to better help their players um and you're gonna start i think seeing this more regularly as as we uh go further into the nil so uh definitely gonna be really i think exciting for college football to see this kind of thing happening yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. It's uh, it's only going to um, just add to the good, uh, to the good side of the whole NIL thing in college football. So, I'm I'm pretty excited about this. I, I think this is just another way for for the college to do the right thing by the you know walk on players and uh, every every you know every situation where you want to help out these kids that are not as fortunate and athletically uh, gifted as some of the others. Absolutely. So definitely going to be huge. And we'll definitely bring more as uh, we see more of this happening uh, with NIL and with these companies trying to set up with schools. Because I think, like I said, I think this is going to end up becoming a more regular thing. So uh, definitely make sure to check back and we'll have more on this in the future. But one thing that's always great to do is go and check out City Limits Tap Room in beautiful d Florida. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to go down to 2620 North Woodland Boulevard in beautiful d Florida, where you can enjoy all kinds of live music, great food, and awesome drinks uh, from all the great craft beers on tap, as well as all the great liquor that they serve there as well. And you can enjoy all the great specials that City Limits has to offer, including Monday with all day $6 wing baskets and $5 pitchers of Yingling. Yingling, sorry, Land Shark and Bush Light. Tuesday is also Guys Night with half off all wells and drafts from 7 p.m. to close. Wednesdays, all day $5 pitchers of the posted beer from 2 p.m. to close and $2 seltzers at the outside bar. And Thursdays, Ladies Night with $1 wines, wells, and drafts from 7 p.m. to close. And Fridays, Karaoke with Al from 7 p.m. to close. And Sunday, $13 domestic buckets and $16 import and craft buckets all day long. So definitely make sure to go check out City Limits Tap Room in beautiful D-Land, Florida. Which, if we're talking about city limits, that means it's now time for the good old meme madness. And we definitely got a few good ones this week. So definitely make sure to strap in and enjoy the ride because this one's going to be fun. And uh, first things first, we're going to bring up our first one, which says, he was a teacher last year. What kind of substitute teacher throws for 100 miles an hour? Not many, but apparently uh, Stephen Writings can. So just saying. <laughs> Man, I, I tell you true. what. That I, kid's good as hell. He is, man. And I know you know him well being a Yankee fan. So, Oh, yeah. Yeah, that kid is something else. Definitely been something yeah, else. It's, cra- it's crazy how, uh, how you, know, you know, you don't know these players until they come out of the scene. But I've known, I've known about them, but it's just crazy to actually see, like, you know, him come in here and just start making a difference, you know? Absolutely it is. Absolutely. But our next meme says, hey, want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? <laughs> and it's just a picture of Joe Buck. Man, I tell you what. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. But our next one says, it only took the Hall of Fame committee 13 seconds to agree on Peyton Manning's induction, which I think is, in my opinion, 12 seconds too long. So, Agreed. I mean, this should be this should have been a note of brainer. 13 seconds. Maybe it was just that for them, 13 seconds was them saying, okay, guys, the next guy on our list is Peyton Manning. Say yay or nay. (laughs) That better took all 13 seconds. (laughs) Facts. Facts. Oh, Oh, too good. But also touching on Peyton Manning and his Hall of Fame, Tom Brady said, I just need to make sure he's really done. I can't risk this guy coming back when he commented (laughs) on uh, attending his Hall of Fame ceremony. (laughs) Fair enough. I mean, it's true. 
Oh, it definitely How is. How long do you think Tom Brady's uh, Hall of Fame ceremony is going to be? Oh, two geez. hours. Two hours, <laughs> maybe longer. Who knows? Greatest player of all time. Yeah, the actual goat, man, in living form. But when we talk about goats and getting in the Hall of Fame, everybody gets that nice bronze bust. Everybody loves it. Well, the Pro Football Hall of Fame did Peyton Manning dirty with his bust. <laughs> Look at the forehead on that. Yeah. Thing. Dude, that thing is nice. <laughs> Oh, it's too much, too much. But our last meme of the evening is that we're less than five minutes into Hard Knocks and we've already spotted some sketchers, part of the good old Dallas Cowboys fan starter pack. <laughs> For real, though. Oh, such a good one. But that was our meme madness. Thank you guys so much for viewing. Uh, you can only see meme madness, though, uh, in our video format. So definitely make sure to go check us out on YouTube. That way you can see it or here on Facebook and watch the playback. Uh, that way you can check out all the great memes that we bring week to week here on Final Score. That now brings us to Podcast City Network again. What can you tell us about Podcast City Network there, Ivan? Well, guys, I can tell you right now, we always wanted to start a podcast, but didn't know how. Do you already have a podcast, but don't know how to grow it? Are you trying to find ways to make your podcast profitable? You can learn it. You can learn how to do it here at Podcast City Network. We offer consulting services and tutorial classes to help with learning to better expand your knowledge and to grow uh, and and to grow your show. God, I don't know why I always get tripped up on that. We always <laughs> give access to our uh, network of shows to help with cross promotion guests and overall reach while also becoming a part of our ever expanding PCN community based on people helping people. Best part is no, uh, there is no membership fee. So what are you waiting for guys? Go to podcast set, uh, go, Oh my God, go to podcastcity.net slash join now and join the fastest growing independent podcast network around podcast city network. Yeah, buddy. Ooh. Good stuff. Good stuff. So which funny. Which does bring us to the good old give or go. Got a couple good topics this week that we're going to talk about. First things first, J.R. Smith is petitioning to play golf after enrolling at North Carolina A and T. Give or go. Hey man, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with this one, bro. I love this man, J.R. Smith, going back, finishing his degree, but then also wanting to play golf. Hell yeah, let the guy do his thing, man. I love it. Oh, it's so crazy. North Carolina A&T is going to have ticket sales through the roof for their golf program now, having a former NBA star. <laughs> oh, true. Too crazy. Too crazy. But our other give or go topic, the LA Clippers have re-signed Kawhi Leonard to a four-year, $176.3 million max deal. Give or go. Uh I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna give it to you, man. What do you think about this? I think this is definitely gonna help him, especially with the news coming through today that the LA Clippers uh, acquired Eric Bledsoe. So now you're talking about Eric Bledsoe, Kawhi Leonard, and uh, Paul George on the same team. That could be a little big three onto itself. So uh, I think with them locking up Kawhi Leonard and having the great player that he is. Uh, locked up for the next four years definitely helps with them trying to also attract other players uh, to the Clippers. So not everybody's just going to the Lakers. Um, right. So definitely, I think is a good move. Definitely a great move, but we'll definitely see how it actually works out once they actually hit the court again. I agree. So for that, it was our good old give or go. We definitely thank you guys so much for listening, which brings us to pod chaser. Because Apple Podcasts is now not the only place for reliable podcast discovery. Uh, follow creators, browse every podcast ever, and rate and review episodes. All you have to do is go to podchaser.com and search keyword final score, one word, and follow, rate, and review us. And uh, try and leave us a good review because we try to do what we can. <laughs> but that does bring us to the week ahead uh, definitely a lot of stuff going on as we enter uh, week two of the NFL preseason uh, and also get a little bit deeper into the MLB season, uh, which still has a couple months until we start the playoff push. So definitely make sure to check back as we'll have more for you on that as well. Um, that we also need to check out the great lineup of PCN sports shows, including Not a Hockey Market podcast with JDM, the Nest podcast, the Rip Griffin show, and Fixed Edge, which Fixed Edge will be coming to you live this Wednesday at 9 p.m. So definitely make sure to check that out on YouTube Live. Just go on YouTube and search 
Fixed Edge Investing and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out. But you also shouldn't miss out on episode 118 of Final Score next Sunday at 9 p.m. Eastern here on Facebook Live as we'll be giving our NFL predictions uh, for the 2021 season. So definitely make sure to check back for that. But that does sadly bring us to the end of our show. Any final words, sure. Ivan? Oh, nothing else. Stay classy, you guys. Uh, love being being on here with you guys. Love talking it up with you, Chris. And uh, yeah, man, everyone have a good uh, good week. And uh, can't wait for the sports news and college football stuff to ramp up. So really excited, man. Yeah, absolutely. We're only weeks away, which we'll do something special for college football once we get close to the oh, yeah. season starting. So definitely make sure to keep Sounds an eye good. out for that. But until oh, yeah, but until next time, I'm Chris, and that's Ivan whoop, over there. And you guys have a great night. Have a good night, guys. Podcast City Network.